So um, what did we do last time? It's a good place to start this time. So last time I defined uh, outer space. Uh, so this is a space of graphs, uh, marked graphs, uh, with a proper action. <coughs> It's a contractual space. Actually, I didn't say that. It's a space. It has a proper action. And the group of outer automorphisms is a different group. So proper just means that the stabilizers of finites are finite. And the quotient <coughs> MGN is a moduli of metric graphs of rank n. So the fundamental group is the figure from n generators. OK, so I defined this space last time. I gave you a decomposition of this space into the simplices, which you get a different simplex for every graph. But today I want to give a more combinatorial, so there's a lot of combinatorics, obviously, in graphs. So today I want to give you a slightly more combinatorial version of this space. It's called the spine of outer space. And we're going to use that for most of the day, and most of my arguments will be fairly combinatorial. So what is this? Remember, I had uh, this space, CDN, is a union of open simplices. I get one whenever I have a, a marked graph. And the way I get it is by um, varying the lengths on the edges of the graph. I normalize my graph so that the sum of the lengths of the edges is equal to 1. Maybe I should keep a picture over here, like the example I gave last time. If I have a graph like this marked by some homotopy equivalents to that graph, then I've got three, three edges to vary. The sum of the lengths is one, so I get a two simplex. On the edges of this two simplex, I have roses. I get by shrinking various edges of the graph to zero. And these roses cor correspond to two-dimensional simplices because I have two edges. <coughs> so this one of the edges is one. OK. Well, I can think of this thing as a partially ordered set. The set of simplices is partially ordered by this space relation. Is that right? So 
anthropologists call it a geometric realization. And that's what it is. It's just a geometric realization of this partially ordered set. So one way to think of this is KN is sitting inside the um, simplicial closure. And it consists of the simplices <coughs> no faces of infinity. <coughs> example, I have uh, what I've got four simplices in this picture. There's a one corresponding to that graph, this one and this one and this one. Uh, this one's less than that one because I did there by collapsing. This one's less than that one. This one's less than that one. So that's the piece of the spine that lives inside of this simplex. And I can think of it as sitting inside Barycentric subdivision of this simplex. And it just consists of the simplices in this barycentric subdivision with no faces of infinity. And this is a good picture to have because it makes it fairly clear proposition that uh, all of um, outer space, not the simplicial closure, but outer space, deformation retracts. barycentric subdivision. It's got a face that's in the spine, and the other faces are all at infinity. So I just linearly push in from the missing face for the faces that are actually there. So here I would push in like this. This is nice and continuous, because the only place I would run into trouble is trying to push that vertex. I wouldn't know where to push it, but it's not there. Okay, so. It's a, a nice continuous deformation retraction of the whole of outer space onto the spine. So for n equals 2, I drew this picture. Let me just draw a little bit of it. And what does the spine of outer space look like? Well, each of these guys does this. So, so, so these were the, the pictures of the simplices that corresponded to theta graphs. There are also these barbell graphs that come straight out, you, out at you and you can't see. So maybe it's instructive to see what happens if I had a barbell graph instead of a theta graph. simplex in this whole barycentric subdivision that uh, doesn't have a face of infinity is this. Everything else, for instance, here I have a triangle, that whole face is an infinity, so I push it all in towards the opposite vertex. So for each of these barbell graphs, I have a um, single vertex edge sticking out. And that's a complete picture of the spine in this case. So that's the spine of outer space. And 
it's the geometric realization of the post set, so it's a superficial complex. Vic said I was allowed to give you exercises, so exercise. The dimension of Kn is equal to 2n minus 3. Why is that? What's the largest simplex I could possibly get? Well, how do I go to a face? I collapse an edge. So, um, yeah, how many times can I collapse an edge in one of my rank n graphs? Well, what's that many times? And don't forget when you're using the Euler characteristic, the valence of every vertex has to be at least three. So the most vertices you can have in one of my graphs is 2n minus 2. And the most way, the mo the biggest subgraph you can get in a graph with 2n minus 2 vertices is a maximal tree, which has 2n minus 3 edges. So I can do 2n minus 3 forest collapses before I get to uh, a rose. <coughs> OK, so that's uh, Kn. CDN deformation retracts to Kn, so Kn is also contractible. <coughs> Find the cohomology of a group if you like. 
It's proof for it's his theorem, but it doesn't depend on the space. So we don't have a free action, we only have a proper action. So there are two ways to deal with this. If you want to compute cohomology. One, one is you can look inside of out of Fn and see if you can find any subgroups of finite index that don't have any torsion. And it's the theorem of Baumschlag and Taylor. That um, out of Fn contains Origin three finite index subgroups So since they don't have any torsion and the stabilizers uh, uh, the action on outer space are torsion groups um, gamma acts freely exactly information about the cohomology of out, but it gives you virtual information. It gives you um, information about homology of uh, subgroups of finite index. But there's another thing. Another way to, to get around this, this little problem that we don't have a free action, which is to use rational, trivial rational coefficients. Rational coefficients, things 
the action is free, Okay. And so you get you compute the rational cohomology of Q by computing the rational co uh, out of Fn by computing the homology of the now homogenized space of graphs <coughs> the coefficients in Q. And yes, the way to say this, I mean, this is not a um, a proper mathematical proof. Um, the way to say it properly is to use the Burrell construction or the equivariant homology step in sequence. But that's the idea. Is that? I mean, there's a long tradition. If the uh, isotropy is finite, you just opt out to use the rationals. Right. I, I just I didn't know whether everybody here. That's right. that. no, 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 that's yeah. That's valid. <laughs> okay. Can I ask a question? So yeah. do we have an a priori understanding of which uh, primes we have to invert uh, for a fixed stand? I'm sorry, I didn't hear which what? Which primes you have to invert? Yeah, you have to, try to invert the primes that are um, current finite subgroups. Right. And, and which so, ones are those? Yeah, there's lots of information about those. I have some papers about <coughs> um, the biggest The biggest thing that occurs is 2 to the n n factorial. 2 to the n n factorial. Um, there's, there's lots of information about what can occur. It, it's the same primes that occur for GLM. So for finite subgroups of GLM. Okay. Oops, I just erased what I wanted to keep. Dimension of KN equals 2N minus 3. Okay, so I've just told you that I can compute the cohomology of my group out of Fn by looking at the cohomology by looking at Kn and by its book, but its action on Kn. So let's look at the quotient. Call that Qn. That's kind of a combinatorial. <coughs> modulized space. <coughs> I keep erasing this. So I get an immediate corollary about the cohomology of out of Fn. This is a 2n minus 3 dimensional space. It doesn't have any homology above dimension 2n minus 3.
bigger and bigger forests in the crash. K, K forests. <laughs> so this is a simplex. And what does the action of out of Fn do? It just changes the marking. And it changes it transitively. So the syntheses in Qn are just isomorphism classes consisting of a graph and a chain of, chain of forests. In particular, I only have a finite number of graphs I'm allowed. There's only a finite number of forests in any graph. So that means the quotient QN is a finite complex. And so it's uh, compact. So in particular, this tells me that the cohomology of out of Fn, the graph coefficients, is finitely generated period. Every group is finitely generated. There's only finite and many of them and uh, what happens in the critical degree to n minus 3? Does it vanish or...? That's a very good question. You can answer that. You can get a paper in a good journal. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for the thing. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so we have this is finitely generated. And if you'll notice, uh, I've described uh, syntheses in QN. I should say that Kn is definitely a simplicial complex, but the quotient is no longer a simplicial complex. Because, for instance, I could have um, a graph like this, and I could collapse, say, this tree. So this consists of, a, that's a graph in a forest. And then that gets me to a rose. So this is an edge in my simplicial complex. I collapsed some edges and I got from this marked graph to this marked graph. Or in the quotient from this graph to this graph. But I could also collapse a different forest. So I, the way I should really do this is the vertex corresponds to a graph and the edge corresponds to a forest collapse. But there are other forests in here which are not equivalent to that one. So there's another edge from that point in the quotient. This is a picture in Q. Okay, so different forests, those are different syntheses and uh, I no longer have a simplicial complex because the syntheses are not determined by their vertices. But anyway, it's a finite complex. And so here's a here's work for Vic and anybody else with Young. Uh, 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 sorry, I just slightly lost, lost, lost track for a second. Sorry. Do you, what do you know about the integral cohomology of outer, outer space of C, B, N? What, what do you, do you, is that known? This is what the next two lectures are about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because well, actually, I'm going to talk about the rational homology. If you want the integral homology, what do you have to do? You have to look at the equivariant homology spectral sequence. Yes. You have to understand the homology of the stabilizers and how they all fit together, and the homology of the quotient space. So it's, it's, it's not just a matter of 
plugging in the fibration. Yeah. And, uh, well, is, is this group uh, virtually torsion free? Yes. That's bounce log and Taylor's theorem I have. I mean, yeah. yeah. They but have torsion free circuits in finite index. But do you know it's a virtual homological dimension? Yes. It's 2n minus 3? Yes. There's 2n minus 3 dimensional free abelian circuit. So that gives a lower bound, but this gives an upper bound. Uh, let me see. Uh, right. So the next thing I wanted to say is, is a question. What is the other characteristic of n? And I've given all the information you need to compute it. I've told you what all the simplices are. The simplest is, is, uh, is given by a graph and a chain of forests isomorphism class, so all you need to do, this is a k-simplex, so you, all you have to do is add up the alternating sum of um, these numbers. Right? And so you need to count them. And I'll tell you that uh, that's question one and question two. So this is just the plain Euler characteristic of this space. Um, usually when you talk about the Euler characteristic of the group, you don't really mean that Euler, well, it's the same as the action of the group, but otherwise it's kind of like an orbital Euler characteristic. Here's one way to define it. Uh, take uh, un or the characteristic of the quotient by a torsion free finite index subgroup and divide by the index. Okay. Um, so I'll tell you what's known about this. There's a generating function, for this one anyway. function has pluses and minuses in it. You can compute it out to 100 or so, and the numbers are negative, and they get big really fast, uh, but we can't prove they're non-zero. <coughs> I guess we can prove it if for, e, for n even, but not. we don't have a general proof for all n. Okay, yeah. Can you write the generic new function? Can I write it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my paper. Okay. Um, it's a mess. <coughs> in that equation where you define chi of out of fn in the yeah. numerator, it says chi of? Uh, so this is the this moduli space, the combinatorial moduli space of graphs. I've taken a finite index subgroup and I've, I've uh, so which does act freely. I'm sorry. So, so the idea is you take a finite index subgroup, you want to compute its Euler characteristic, you can do it by this space. Right, so before you model out by can, is that a k then? Is that a, I can't well, that's read it. that's an Euler characteristic. <laughs> but I thought qn you already modded out by. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. That's better. pattern to them, and they didn't seem to be in any of the standard lists, so we sent them to Don Zagier. 
And he said he didn't know, so I think we're okay. I mean, he worked on it. He actually simplified our generating function quite a bit. But, um, so maybe. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, some information now about the rational homology of out of Fn. I'll try to keep on this board. So, uh, uh, let's do this Hi. Put in here Hi of out of Fn, rational coefficients. Um, so it doesn't get interesting to the 52. And what do we, we have that uh, if I've done this right, I get slope. <coughs> starts at 2 and goes up at slope a half. This is the VCD. VCD of out of F2 is 1, the VCD of out of F3 is 3, VCD of out of F4, the dimension of this space is 5, etc. And we know if i is bigger than that, these are all zero. I'm sorry, could you just label the axes again? This is i, <coughs> this is n. Oh, sorry. And this is the homology of out of Fn. And if i is too big, then uh, get zero. No? No? That's yeah, the theorem, theorem, not a computation. That's the theorem. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's what we know so far. At the moment, this is unknown for us so far. Um, So I haven't really proved much. I was going to actually prove something. So I think I can do it. Um, so this space, this outer space is contractible, right? So that's not a particularly easy theorem. But it's not very hard to show this space Kn, the, the spine is connected. to show it to you because it's very simple with the right point of view and it's really kind of the basis for, for everything else that, that happens in outer space. Uh, it uses Stalin's folds. So I want to prove this space is connected so I'm at some arbitrary graph, GG, and I want to get to some other arbitrary graph, G prime, G prime. Well, it's really easy to get from any graph to a rose, just collapse the maximal tree. graphs. I don't have to think about lengths on the edges anymore. So Stalin's folds use, graph, use what he calls graph morphisms.
find its linear on edges. So it either sends uh, an edge to another edge or it collapses it. So there's not going to be any problem there. 
local injectivity is only going to fail in the vertex. And how could the local injectivity fail in the vertex? Well, two of these edges have to get folded together. I can do it again. So 
until I finally get to some graph over there where the map is locally injected. Why, do it, why does this process end? See whether you follow what I'm doing. Sorry? Sorry, you compactify. No, nothing so fancy. This map, you know, it's. This graph only has a finite number of edges. Every time I fold, I decrease the number of edges. I can't do that forever. Sorry. How could you, sorry, could you say briefly how that shows the connectivity of I'm not done yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm doing the Stallings fold and I get right. to this graph over here, okay? And uh, this is locally injected. And now here's another exercise. Yeah, that means exercise. Uh, that means G is a homeomorphism. You can't have a locally injected graph homeomorphism of a rose to a row. Uh, of, yeah, to a rose without it being actually a homeomorphism. Okay, so now we get to Tony's question. So you see I have a path of marked graphs, yes? Each one of these is a marked graph. So each one of these is a point in, in outer space, right? It's fine. But it's not so clear uh, how to get from this one to this one, or this one to this one. And here's where uh, you, you just have to rethink a little bit what a fold is. Oh, sorry, I have this thing where I folded these two things and they became one edge. This was G1. But I could have done this kind of in two stages. I could have folded part way.
So then we got out of it then is a group of uh, homotopy classes, homotopy equivalences of a graph. And then, but that was only one, um, one in a whole series of groups. If you add points, uh, distinguished points on the graph, you got these gamma and S's, which is homotopy equivalences of the graph, but you have some points. And all the homotopy equivalences have to uh, fix all of the points. Okay. So in particular, gamma N1. So let me just say that uh, there are outer spaces. We call it O and S. I guess I can't call them outer spaces anymore. Retractable spaces. And there are moduli spaces. and their spines, and their quotients. The whole theory goes through if you have marked points. The fact that these are contractible was first proved by Alan Hatcher. In, uh, yeah, I don't know, about 1990 or so. Maybe early. Maybe early. Okay, so, uh, right. So what I want to look at now is the case <laughs> S equals 1. In which case this gamma N1 is just hot for that N. And there are natural maps from the automorphisms of the free group of rank n to the graph to the um, automorphisms of the free group of rank n plus one, in which you don't do anything to the last generator. So this is kind of mirrored in these spaces. This is a moduli space of graphs of rank n, or an outer space of graphs of rank n. I guess I'm going to think mostly about the spines today. So there's also a k and one, k and plus one, one, a map that commutes with these actions, which just takes a graph with a base point and uh, adds a loop at the base point. So that's an inclusion of spaces. Well, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. So then I need to, to, to change the marking too. So I just add the last, send this to the last generator. Okay. So this is uh, the reason I'm passing from hot, from out to hot now, is that there's no map from out of it then to out of it <coughs> plus one in general. No natural map anyway. In fact, uh, all maps have to be zero, which is a uh, finite image. So there's not any, there's really not any maps. So if I have this situation, on the other hand, I can talk about homology stability. I think it's 5 plus 1 over 
and we don't know whether that's sharp. Um, but at least there, the homology stabilizes. And there's actually a very... There should be a tent. Sorry? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and it's big. So, uh, in particular, in my graph over here, uh, I've got basically slope one. So, here I'll have stable homology, and here I'll have unstable homology. And as Ulrika told you, uh, Soren Galatius proved that the stable homology is trivial. Well, actually what he proved is that the map from the symmetric group into odd of Fn induces an isomorphism uh, if n is big enough. And, uh, right. So, uh, so, so this is a fine, if we're taking rational coefficients, so this is true integrally. With any coefficients, this is true. <coughs> but if we take uh, Q coefficients, I just told you that the homology of a finite group, this is a symmetric group. I just told you that the homology of a symmetric group is attributed with rational coefficients is zero. So we actually get this is zero. Yeah? Is, it, is there an isomorphism through a range of I as well? Fixed in. Uh, no. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> phi is bigger than 2n minus 3, guys, so it's 0. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Okay, so what I want to do next is uh, give you a uh, nice geometric proof of this. Which doesn't involve anything fancy at all, just these spaces, QN, QNS. So here's a, a proof. Well, a couple of um, so, So what I'm going to do is look at this quotient. The homology of this is equal rationally to the homology of R Fn. Inside of here, I'm going to look at a highly connected subcomplex. So to define the subcomplex, I need to define the degree of the graph. I guess a 
really wouldn't matter if I had some bimalar vertices with it. It's still, it's not going to change. Okay, so let me just go back over here. Put my examples board. So let's, uh, yeah, three zero. When I add up the valence minus two for vertices that aren't at the base point, I'm supposed to get zero. In other words, there aren't any vertices that aren't at the base point. That's the only kind of graph I could have. What about degree one? Well, I can have as many loops as I want at the base point, but I can only have one vertex of valence three that's not at the base point. How about degree two? Well, I could have something. I could have whatever I want at the base point. Maybe I could have two of these guys. Uh, I could have, so I could have two trivalent vertices that aren't at the base point. Or I could have one four valent vertex that's not at the base point. Those are all of the degree two graphs there are. So lemma, etc. So there's only a finite number of graphs of any given degree, uh, up to the up to the number of loops at the base point. So maybe the way to say that is. Um, Uh, if 
I look at, and of course it's, it's odd of Fn variant. Right? As, as always, the, the group of automorphisms does not change the kind of graph I'm looking at. It only changes the marking. So uh, the degree is something that's definitely not changed by the action. I guess this is less than OK. OK? So the homology, so this is k minus 1 connected. It kind of acts like a k minus 1 skeleton for the whole space. So if I want to uh, compute the cohomology of the quotient in dimensions less than k minus 1, I get the same answer if I look at, the, uh, at, the, at this piece as I did at the whole contractible space. So hi of quotient.
basically it has to do with the fact that the odd of F3 doesn't have any homology. And you can somehow bootstrap that information up a little bit. Okay. So this theorem up here that this space is, is highly connected. Um, the, the case, so, you know, it's, well, there's two proofs. One's very combinatorial and one's basically a general position argument. But let me just say uh, that you should have some idea of why this might be true. I told you how to go from a rose to the standard rose in Kn. So what does this say about, um, so I showed you that Kn is connected always. So what this says is that if I want to connect these two roses, I only have to use degree zero and one graphs. I don't have to use all possible graphs. The degree one subcomplex is the one consisting of this type of graph and this type of graph. So when I went from this rose to this rose, I went through a lot of graphs. <coughs> I, went, I went through a lot of graphs. So this <coughs> definitely left, well, right here, left the one skeleton. Uh, I left the, sorry, the degree one subcomplex. However, there's an easy way to get back to the degree one sub subcomplex, which is just collapse the maximal tree. And then I'm left, I can do that at every step, step along the way. Maybe I should make it slightly longer. I don't know what, what happens next. Maybe that happens. I can collapse the maximal tree and get uh, a path from a rose to a rose to a rose, like that. And really all I have to do is tell you that I can get from this rose to this rose uh, by, by avoiding, by just using rank degree one graphs. So uh, the idea is that to get from here to here, I collapse the tree. There was this guy in the middle. And uh, I get from this guy to this guy by collapsing the tree. I get from this guy to this guy by collapsing the tree. So all I have to do is figure out how to do this path from here to here to here in steps of degree one graphs. And the idea which all combinatorialists know, is that you can get from one maximal tree in a graph to another maximal tree in a graph by changing one edge at a time. So if I change one edge at a time, I get a whole bunch of things. And each time, the intermediate graph will only have one extra vertex. And I have to shake a little to get the degree one vertices. But that's so this is a very rough idea, I'm sorry, but uh, at least this should be kind of believable that you don't really need uh, graphs of high degree, even though the path I gave you with Stalling's folds <coughs> uses high degree graphs, you can kind of push that path down into the degree one subcomplex. That's, does anybody find that believable? Yeah. <laughs> okay, exercise. <laughs> two proofs of this in general. Uh, one's a general position argument in outer space, and one's a combinatorial Morse theory argument in uh, the spine of outer space. Uh, the general position argument I find slightly more convincing just because it's kind of natural. You avoid all the places where uh, you have too many uh, vertices. But the Morse theory one is maybe easier to understand. Okay. 
right. Oh yeah, so I wanted to make a couple more remarks about uh, the homology stability business. Before I stop. One is that uh, you can get integral homology stability with the same argument but you need a little bit more when you go from rank n to rank n plus 1 add another loop to the base point. So although it's true that the homeomorphism type of the quotient doesn't change, what does change is the stabilizer of this vertex in the outer space does change. But it changes in a very controllable way. This is basically a little sign. The, the stabilizer of this graph upstairs is the group of automorphisms of this graph. So it's a it's something over here plus a little sine symmetric root. And when you go up here, this part's still exactly the same, but you get a slightly bigger sine symmetric root. So if you know the fact that the homology of uh, sigma n to the homology of sigma n plus 1 stabilizes. You can put this information into the equivariant homology spectral sequence together with the fact that this stabilizes and get integral homology stability. So that's for people who know about equivariant uh, homology spectral sequence. So this was observed by Desmina. Um, so that's one comment. The other comment I wanted to make the short exact sequence from odd of fn Yeah. 
graph here corresponding to a simplex. It's really a graph of a chain of forests. I want to just uh, add up over all possible vertices in the graph. The valence of the vertex minus 2 times the graph with the vertex there and the same chain of force. And you have to check this is a chain map. In other words, it commutes with this collapsing operation, the boundary operation. Well, it commutes with the boundary. And what happens if you, let's see, where do I want to start? I'm going to start at, with no base point, add a base point in this way, and then forget the base point again. And what's going to happen, if I add all these base points with these multiplicities, cleverly chosen, when I forget them again, I will have exactly 2n minus 2 multiples of my original graph. And my 2n minus 2 copies of my original graph. Okay? This is multiplication by... So now, since I'm in rational homology, These are rational vector spaces, so this is an isomorphism. So in particular, I get, on homology, I get, uh, well, on chain complexes, I get the chains in uh, Q and 0 inject into the chains on Q and 1. I get uh, uh, this kid computes the homology out of n is contained in injects into the homology of uh, odd of n. Yeah? So, Harry, could you just go over the definition of the chain map again, please? It's sort of hard to read. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll do it up here. my degree graphs anymore. So the chain map, I'm looking at uh, graphs with no base points, and I want to map the graphs <laughs> with the base point. So here's a graph with no base points, and I want to map to a graph with a base point. And what I do is I put the base point everywhere I could, multiply by the valence minus 2. So I get two of these plus two of those. And that induces a map. So uh, a simplex here is a graph of a bunch of forests. And this induces a map on graphs of forests. <coughs> and uh, then if I forget the base points again, I just four, get four copies of this graph, which with any luck is 2 times 3 minus 2. Level, so it's an isomorphism on homology too. Um, 
So this composition is an isomorphism. This, that means this is an injection. Right? And this is a surjection. So the homology of out of FN lives inside the homology of out of FN. I know this is stably zero. So that means this one is stably zero too. Whatever stably zero means. Yeah. This is zero. Thank you. 